All right, bro, I got all the ingredients to give the Nightlife crew a delicious treat. Yes. But do me a favor, don't let anyone touch it. All right. I mean nobody, bro, not even yourself. All right. But before I go... Mm. Mm. Did you eat my ice cream? Duh. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm not sure who did. Okay. Thanks for being honest. of nightlife, Tim Bergen. Hey, good job, guys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kurt and Kellen, a musical gift to America. And as always, the sharp and stupendous Sydney. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to Nightlife. Every night, more and more people are discovering their new favorite television program. Now, every program has a theme or an idea that we like to think about and discuss, and even at times challenge our perspective. Tonight, we present integrity. What do you think of when you think of integrity? Well, the dictionary defines it this way. Integrity is adherence to a moral and ethical principles, soundness of moral character, honesty. Now, in a world where the end justifies the means, how can integrity stand? Someone once said, success comes and goes, but integrity lasts forever. Now, in the Bible, King David writes uh, in the 15th chapter of Psalms, God honors a man who keeps his word even if it hurts and doesn't change his mind. Why is it so hard for people to have integrity? Well, the people that we hope would have the highest level of integrity, some of them rank the lowest. In a recent Gallup poll of the top five least ethical and honest professions, number five, U.S. senators. Number four, advertising practitioners. Number three, insurance sales number two, car sales, and the occupation which was judged the lowest in ethics and honesty, members of the U.S. Congress. By the way, the highest ethics were number five, dentists, number four, clergy, three, doctors, two, pharmacists, and one, nurses. Look at it this way. We don't trust the people we believe are trying to sell us something, but we trust the people that have a personal relationship with whom we believe are caring for us. On today's program, a man whose picture is in the dictionary under integrity, Representative Rick Saccone is with us. And we'll be right back to talk to him about maintaining and keeping integrity even when you work in government. We'll be right back after this. Guys, take us out. There are a number of people in my life that I think of when I think of the word integrity, and one of those at the top of the list is Rick Saccone. He is the representative to the State House in Pennsylvania from the 39th Congressional District. Welcome with me, Rick Saccone. Rick, come on down, buddy. Pleasure, glad, to, glad to have you here. Have a seat. Welcome to Nightlife. Oh your my first gosh. first experience with this. Yeah, I'm really glad Scary. to be here. Now you, you worked with me on his place years ago, and and you've been on on Cornerstone Television for other things. But I'm I'm glad I'm glad you're here. Now a lot of people know you as Representative Rick Saccone, 39th District Congressional District from Pennsylvania here. But what were you before you decided to run for office? 
So I've done a lot of things. I have a diverse background. I'm a retired military officer. Uh, I uh, teach uh, college at St. Vincent in La Trobe. I teach international relations there. Been an international businessman. I served as an international diplomat in North Korea for a year, uh, working on the nuclear <laughs> One of the few power people plant. who actually lived in North Korea. And I was the Americans. only American living there for that year, and I wrote a couple books about that. So I'm an author, written nine books. Um, well, I, you, you know, if, if I had all the time in the world with everything that's going on in North Korea, I'd be like, Rick, you got to tell me what, what's, what's going yeah, on. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about with that place. But with, with all this background, uh, you could obviously have a successful career in education, in the military, and, and things like that. But you decided to run for office. Why? Well, it, I originally ran for state office because I looked at the person that was ahead of me, the person that was representing us, and I felt like the person didn't represent the people of my district well anymore. The, the values had changed, and, and uh, I felt like uh, I needed to step up and, and represent the people better. So I challenged that person, and I won. <laughs> it was I, a tough road. It was a tough road, I have yeah. to say. Well, it, I, I mean, it's a fight. In, in, in politics in the United States, it, it seems like it doesn't necessarily matter if a person is good anymore, if their name, if they have name recognition, and so to, to stand up and, and make that fight, that had to be tough. It, at the beginning of the program, I shared about a, a Gallup poll, and in that Gallup poll, sadly to say, um, U.S. senators and uh, U.S. members of Congress were some of the lowest with integrity and ethics. Is that just the perception of people? Do they deserve that? What, why do you think that is? As a group, I think, you know, uh, the government has let people down so much. They've been disappointed. They've elected people to office and who said they were going to do certain things, and when they get there, they change. They don't do what they said they were going to do. So people are very disenchanted with politicians, and you know, rightfully so in many cases. And we've had a lot of corruption uh, at the state level and in Washington. People look at that and say, you know, why bother anymore? Does it matter? Does, is there anyone that we can put into office that will actually... Uh, represent us well. So, yeah, people, that's why I believe the rating is so low. For as long as I've known you, um, you are a man of integrity. And what, what is it that makes you different? Why are you above the fray? I mean, it, before you ran for the House, you were a man of integrity. And, and while you're there, you, you have been as well. What makes you different? What, what are the key elements that say this is why Rick Saccone has integrity, has ethics. I really try. I mean, obviously, the, the Bible is my compass, and I try to uh, live in a godly way. But um, I, it's important to me that uh, I, my word is, is, is my bond. Where I, where I come from, people know my family. And uh, I, I never want to ruin my or stain my word. So if I say I'm going to do something, I try very, very hard to do it. I try to live by my word and, and be honest with people and uh, don't tell them what they want to hear, but try to lay out the facts for them and tell them what I plan to do. And they may not agree with it, and oftentimes <laughs> they don't. <laughs> but uh, at least they'll know where I'm coming from, and they'll always know that what they're getting uh, is the truth. So I, I try to do that uh, as, as much as humanly possible. It's It's been a... a it's been a long road in politics and in American culture that we've gone from the days of where, listen, I, I might not agree with what you have to say, but I will defend it to the death your right to say it. We, we don't have that anymore. The, the idea of that kind of integrity of saying, listen, I, I might not necessarily agree with you, but I know that your heart is right as far as what you want to do, things like that. The integrity, integrity, morality, ethics in America as a whole has seemed to have disintegrated. It's not just politics that needs a correction. It is business. It is uh, the standard in life. What do you think, why do you think our ethics as a country, our, our morality as a country has taken such a hit? I've, I've looked at this over a long period of time now. We've, our culture has really changed. It's shifted to a, a culture of selfishness and greed, and it's turned its back on God. I really believe that. So I've tried to, uh, you know, I've been uh, uh, an advocate for certain things like our national motto and so forth to try to restore God to his rightful place in our culture because when God was a, a major part of our culture, our culture was different. It was more honest and, and people uh, worked with each other better and so forth. So uh, I really believe that turning away from God has affected our country as a whole. I, I know that you've taken some hits for standing for our national motto, <laughs> yes. in God we trust. I can believe that, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, is it like all of a sudden people are, are, are saying, gee, 
we can't have that. You know, I, I didn't realize it was our national motto. Are or people, or, or people that naive that they didn't know it? Or why do you think you took those kind of hits? It's a combination of things. And first, I want to say that I really, I took some hits, but overwhelmingly the response is positive. But there are, there's a segment of society that's, that's going to fight back on that. And, uh, yeah, it's a combination of things. Some people didn't realize it was our national motto. Some people don't want God to be our national motto. They're just against that. And we've been beaten down now for 60 years by secularists telling us that, that God has never been a part of our government, that God is, that we're a secular country when it's absolutely false. And uh, so just having that motto right there in front of them, it, you know, it, it, it causes them some, some dissonance and makes them angry sometimes, and they want to push back on that. Both of your sons are men of integrity as well. So somewhere along the line, you have been able to teach them. Um, there is, uh, you know, 25% of America is fatherless right now. The, the idea of absentee fathers and the impact, how that, the impact in our culture with uh, uh, educational hits and crime and, and things like that because of the lack of, of fathers. How were you as a father able to teach integrity, teach ethics, teach morality, so that both of your boys would be that way. Yeah, so in, not only in teaching it and trying to uh, instill biblical values in them, but I think the most important thing for fathers is their example. So I, I noticed at a very young age, my son's really watching me and watching how I handled situations when I was challenged and what did I do as a, as a dad. And now I see them as they're older now, they're 33 and 32, I see them with their own families and I see how they are uh, uh, mimicking back to me some of the things that I said that I didn't think they were paying attention to when they were small, but they're actually, they've, it, those things were put in their hearts. And uh, so I, I, it makes me feel good as a father that, 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 that it worked, the example worked mm -hmm. and they, they learned from it and, I, and they're, they're applying it too in their lives. The, the impact of, of having a, a father active in a child's life does, uh, it seems to do amazing things and, and it has a, it's a challenge in our culture to see that happen. I, I want to shift now. I, 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 we're talking about integrity. We're talking about ethics, but we do this thing called fishbowl questions. And they're just random questions that, that you know, as a representative, people see you as Representative Rick Saccone. Well, I, I know you as nice guy, Rick <laughs> Saccone. And so, so uh, I, you know, the, and these are literally random questions. Okay. So I don't know what's going to pop up. So are you ready? Okay. Okay. Let's random question number one. Okay. Favorite book of the Bible? Book of Matthew. Uh, it's always been my favorite book. I, it's the book that really, I think, turned me around when I started reading the book of Matthew. I named my son Matthew uh, after the book of Matthew. Um, just Christ's words in there. When I, I, I didn't start really reading it intensely until I, I was an adult. And when I, when I read Christ's words, I was like, wow, I, did, I, I just never knew that he said these things. And they really, they really touched me. It had an impact on my life. So it's my, it is my favorite book. Okay. Next random question. Okay. Favorite vacation spot? Rome. Rome. Oh, we've really? been there. Rome? Oh, I love Rome. The, you know, it, we've been there several times. I think five times now. So my ancestors are from Italy, but they're from further south mm -hmm. in Naples. But when we, whenever we visit Rome, there's there's so much to see. There's so much history there, and we never get tired of it. We we love going back there. Very cool. Okay. Okay. Here's here's one that uh, you might need to think about. If you could invite four famous people to dinner, who would they be oh and gosh. why? Four famous people. Four now that could be people. from anywhere in history. It could be people alive today. Who who would you invite to dinner? Wow, that's uh, that's something. They, they, they would mostly be presidents for me because I, I do honor my favorite president, George Washington. I wish I could have him there. I'd love to talk to him about integrity and mm -hmm. how he lived his life. Uh, Abraham Lincoln. I'd definitely invite him for how he incorporated God into his political life. It's just a, it's been a. a uh, an inspiration to me. Ronald Reagan, I definitely would invite him there. I grew up uh, just loving uh, that president. And uh, the fourth one, I'm not sure who that would be. Uh, I have to think about that a little more. But um, It's funny, we, we, uh, uh, we lift up these guys and, and they had, uh, the thing I love about men in the Bible and the thing I love about our historical leaders is that they all have their faults. They all have their foibles. They all have their, you know, it seemed that Abraham Lincoln battled depression and yet he was, you know, struggling to, to, to be a man of integrity, be a man, you know, to, to stand for what was right and to deal with things and, and all the accusations against George Washington that come up. But, but these, these men stood 
the test of time. They might not have been appreciated uh, all through history by certain people, but, but they stood the test of time. Let me see if I can. Can I add one thing sure, to that? Sure, sure, So you know what? Politics is vicious, and that's one of the, the, the bad parts of it. But all these men, George Washington said, and I, it may sound corny today, but I really do try to live, live by this. George Washington said, pay no attention to the ill-natured remarks people make about you live so that no one would believe them. I really try to do that. And I think that's what they did. And that's how they got through it. You know, because people attack you all the time when you're in politics, when you're in public life right. of any kind. But if you, if, you, if you have a life that people know, uh, they'll say, well, I know Rick Saccone. That's not him. He didn't do right. that, I'm sure. So I try to do that. I learned from them. And I think that's how they got through you it. Know what, and I think that's the, the reason why the poll numbers are the way that they were in the, in the poll that I read earlier is that the people, the dentist, the doctor, the pharmacist, these are people that you know, that you have relationship with, that, that um, it's one of the things I stress in my church, as a matter of fact, because you know, even as a pastor, people can say all kinds of things that they want to, yes. and all it takes is one accusation to destroy you know, a, a pastor's you know, church and destroy, destroy his life. But there's, there's a challenge there, and that when people get the no, when, when you are no longer you know, it's a thing that tears down prejudice. It's a thing that, that tears down every form of misunderstanding. It's, I can, I can have an opinion of who Rick Saccone is. I can have an opinion of who Tim Bergen is. But when I get to know them, all of a sudden, it is, it is a different Absolutely story. Absolutely correct. Well, Rick, I, I appreciate we're we are out of time. I appreciate appreciate oh, you thanks. being here, and uh, uh, brother, uh, you have got a tough job, and uh, so I'll be praying for you. Well, we're going to be back. We've got uh, Sydney is here with the nightlife scoop. Despite all the bad news you see, there's still really good people out in the world, and Sergio Jorres is one of them. Sergio and his family are homeless, and they've been living out of a motel in San Diego. One day, while Sergio was walking, he came across a money order for $676. Instead of keeping it, he tracked down the check's owner and gave it back to Yesenia Ortiz del Valle. Yesenia was so touched by Sergio's good deed, she started a GoFundMe campaign for Sergio and his family. Hundreds of people donated more than $13,000 to the family. Sergio says his family is so blown away by the kindness of others, and he knows that God's hand was all over the situation. Tim, I absolutely love this story because he could have done anything at that moment to help his family, but he decided to give it back to the owner. I, I mean, somebody with less character could have looked and said, you know what, it, or, or they could have said, well, look, it's God. They dropped off this, this money. And, and to see him take that and say, listen, this isn't mine. Right. Integrity is something that's, that's inside of you. It is, isn't something that's rich or poor, or it's just something that's inside of you. That is amazing. I, I love you get these stories. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, when I saw this one, it really just like touched my heart. I'm just like, wow, because you know, I do work with people that you know, live in homelessness and I know their mm -hmm. dire situation, but he just you know, said, you know what, I'm just gonna do the right thing in that moment. So it was really beautiful to see that. Excellent, thanks for the story, Sydney. Yeah, and speaking of stories, the guys are gonna tell us a story, I guess, about what is the National Day of. Give us the news of the day, guys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. Kellen, tell them. Today is National Tap Dance Day. And William Henry Lane, he's known for the Juba dance. It was a mix of European jig and African rhythms. It became popular in 1845, and some say this was the beginning of tap as an art in America. So as we celebrate National Tap Dance Day, Kellen and I choreographed a little routine just for you. Kellen, let's do it. So what do you think? Do you have integrity? We heard from Representative Rick Saccone, and I tell you, he is a man of integrity. And then the homeless guy that could have taken that money and gone any place with it, could have spent it on himself, but instead went to find the person that owned it, that's integrity. Do you keep your word even when it hurts? Or are you like those guys? Well, it's difficult when we want to keep and live with integrity but here's what we can do. If, if we put the Lord first in every aspect of our lives, then it can happen. If rather than keeping our word to our boss or our friends or our family, thinking that 
that's what we're doing. If we live like we're keeping our word to God, then it'll happen. See, every person I know has been hurt at one time or another because of a lack of integrity. Someone didn't keep their promise, their word, or their vows. And then what happens? Well, we get hurt. And we can get stuck there if we're not careful. Now, if someone through their lack of integrity has hurt you, let me challenge you to do this. Forgive. Now, I know that's not easy. I know it doesn't seem fair. But it doesn't mean that you have to have relationship with them. But your forgiveness also doesn't leave them unaccountable for their actions. What it does, and hear me on this because it's very, very important, it sets you free from the bondage of unforgiveness. And unforgiveness can just keep you trapped for a long time. Now, maybe you've been the one that has showed a lack of integrity. I got a challenge for you. Choose to make it right with the person you hurt. That's part of repentance. The idea of, of just saying, well, I'm sorry is one thing, but to make it right is a totally another thing. And it's something that God honors and he challenges us to do. Either way, you may need help right now to make it to the next level. If you're the one that hurt or you're the one that has received the hurt, here's what I want you to do. Call one of our friends, 888-665-4483. That's 888-665-4483. Let them pray with you. Let them pray for you. It'll change your life. Well, thanks for watching. It is our heart's desire to always bring a little light into your night from all of us. That's Robin, and Dave, Kirk and Kellen, Sydney, and from me. We pray that you have a blessed week, a blessed day, and we'll see you next time on Nightlife. Guys, take us out with a song. Have you ever tried to fly? But couldn't spread in your wings And the weight of your life Burdens every day But I'm here to tell you There's hope for change His name is Jesus He's my everything So come on and fly upon The wings of His love Taking you higher and higher Soar above your pain and your problems Take me away, I want to fly, want to fly, want to fly, yeah Cause situations got you down And you're feeling like there's no one around You can have the world and yet feel so empty yeah, yeah. And you may feel that there's no hope. No hope yeah. Life's too hard for you to go. You to go. Just look up to the, sky. to the sky. Spread your wings and fly. Yeah, fly yeah. Upon the wings of the oh, sky. Taking you. Taking you. All right. Higher. higher. So above. Fly, fly upon, spread your wings.